we can start. Hello. Hello. Hi, nice Shirley. to meet you too. Nice to meet you. And finally, we have the possibility to meet. I know you from Twitter and from videos. And I think we have the same story a bit. And that's why I'm so happy to have that fire chat with you today. I'm happy too. It's wonderful to be here. It's a big honor for me to be here with you. Yeah, I, I don't know how it was for you. Um, you talked about your story uh, this morning. Um, when I came to the European Parliament, I was the only woman with disabilities. And now we are six MEPs with disabilities. Wow. Well, well, I'm still facing challenges um, in the Parliament. How was it in, in the Knesset, in the building? Uh, they were prepared or you were <laughs> lost? <laughs> it's a good question. Actually, as you know, before me, there was a member in the Israeli parliament with wheelchair, but a deaf person, it's never have. It's a different access. So when I came here, came a member in the Israeli parliament, they accept me with open arms. They want to be access for me. Uh, they thought about different kind of access for me, but I do have challenge, for example, in the flume, when we vote in, where we are voting, um, a person that is not member in the Knesset cannot walk inside. It means that me, I am a member in the Knesset, I'm a political, but I have no uh, opportunity to talk with the minister or member in the Knesset. I need to be in my chair because the interpreter cannot go with me. Yeah. So it was a big problem for me. She cannot walk. Uh, in the beginning, so I asked the Knesset to change it, to give me an equal opportunity, and happily they improve it, so she can move with me after that. And the second thing is my uh, office in the Knesset, it's make more accessibility for me when I'm working on my computer and someone knock on the door, there is a bell that he push and the light uh, is flashing in my office. And when I need to vote, uh, there is a sound. So it changes to a, a flight flash flashes for me. Green or red, it depends what the uh, meaning. Uh, and the interpreter, every member in the Knesset get three uh, assistants. The interpreter was the first for me because she not assistant. One problem that I do want to to fix uh, in the future is that the my interpreter was one all day long, and I want to change it that that they can uh, switch interpreter because she getting tired, and it's a lot of hard work. And I'm talking with you about a. Uh, uh, working at night, all the morning, 1%, it's impossible. But actually, the, I was a little bit surprised about how the Knesset want to be accessible for me. And there is more to do, it's of course, but it was, it was good. It's, yeah. When I came to the European Parliament, um, they called me um, and asked, uh, what do I need? And I don't know, um, I'm not a wheelchair user. Um, I don't know what I need and, and how the Parliament is inside, how accessible it is. To me, sometimes it's a toilet door, I can't close it or I can lock it because the, the key is, is so strong. So uh, that is a little barrier I have, but it's a very important thing. Otherwise, you are locked in the toilet room. Um, and I found out that I couldn't use the voting machine we had, uh, or we have in the parliament. And I couldn't move the chairs we have in the Strasbourg um, plenary room. That's a huge, big, blue, heavy, um, futons, I don't know, big chairs. And I couldn't, oh, I couldn't move them, and I couldn't sit when I wanted to sit. And um, I had to tweet it. I, I Twittered many, many times, and then it worked. And with my voting machine, it's really, really an issue. Um, I'm very transparent on that. Everybody knows it on, <laughs> on the they internet. They change the machine for you? Yeah, I have an, an extra little thing, like a tele-remote thing. 
looks like a little thing from the 70s Star Trek, from a Star Trek movie, and is a little plastic thing with a cable on, and you have three dots on. Yes, no, abstention. And um, that is because I'm the vice chair in the MP committee fixed on my place. But when I'm in another committee and I have to vote, um, it's still a challenge, let's say, that um, the back office is organizing, not my back office, um, the back office of the parliament is organizing the voting machine. And sometimes I, I'm in a hurry, I'm in a rush, and I'm there, okay, where's my place and where's my voting machine? And um, the assistants in the room say, which voting machine? I say, yeah, I have to vote in five minutes. You have to run now. Um, and please, otherwise I can't vote. And uh, that, is, that is still an issue. And that is sometimes, to be honest, after two years, um, really annoying. Um, and that I, I, can, I can understand. It's, you feel not equal. You need all the time uh, to ask them to be accessible for you. It's, it's annoying. And I don't know how, uh, how, what, what your um, way is, your personal way is to, to deal with kind of in situations like that. But I decided uh, on one day, I, I'm really loud and clear in public. And so in the plenary, I grabbed the microphone in the Strasbourg week. It said that you need to get the t for this situation and like that. And I was like, no, I'm not accepting that anymore. And with 705 colleagues in the room and the boss of the plenary, um, I thought that is a moment to get attention and uh, to talk about. I don't write letters. Takes so I, I'm, I'm, I'm not patient enough for letters. And uh, so I was very loud on it. And do you think we need to be more loud? Are we too silent sometimes? To be we are too nice because we are women and disabled? Huge question. Look, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a huge question. I, I'm not sure I tell you why, because a woman like you and women like you, me that uh, need that we are a political woman in a place that people make a decision about the world and we want to stay there and be impact. So as I all the time thinking about it, if I need to be all the time nice because all the people not knowing what is disability people, how to be accessed, and we need to explain over and over and over again. But in the other side, sometimes we need to say it's enough. We need to be accessed just now. We don't have passion anymore. But if we start to yell, so that good well that people have will close for us. We need to make people close into for us to make a noise. Do you understand? Because you can yell all the time. So it's yes, yes, I agree with you that there is a time that enough. You cannot be nice anymore. I said one, two, three times that it we, you need to understand we don't have time to to rest. Yeah. I saw we have still five minutes. Thanks for the for the info. Um, wow, how, we have how a lot is of talking it? About. Yeah. How is it? Um, the question is: How is being a disabled woman in, in that job, in that position, or uh, in in that society? How was it for you? You feel you're discriminated because of you're a woman, or you discriminated um, because you have a disability? Um, wow, <laughs> I'm so happy that you're asking this question. I'm sure that you feel yourself the same. I am a deaf woman in Israel. It's very different with each country you are because there is a change in the non-West. In Israel, there is accessibility and knownness about disability people and deaf, but it's different and we have a lot of work to do. Uh, the people without disability look at us in Israel like uh, angel. Like mm. uh, experiment, like uh, the good people. Wow, it's so touching the heart, and I don't want it. I um, want that people look at me and all disability people, like like in the election. All yeah. party, yeah. Uh, all party. The party is not pay about the interpreter. If I want to be in the election, I need to pay in my 
in my money because if I will tell them to pay me, they say, mm, so don't go there. Yeah. Uh, so so my, my opportunity and chances will be less. So yeah. this is one way. And actually, I was in a, a primate when I was a member in the Knesset. I get birth. And to be a woman in this job, uh, I'm very manly men that yeah, in yeah, four yeah. afternoon, you want to go to the kids, the kids co come back home. I cannot do it. It's yeah. very difficult. Uh, a lot of challenge. Did you get support from, from the parliament? Uh, was it okay? You are a mother, you, you have a husband, he has a job. Um, how is it political, the politician life as a woman, mother? Look, um, in the end of the day, everybody understands there is a lot of women uh, in the parliament that fighting in this situation. But until today, nobody make a real change in the how we work in the Knesset uh, to be more, uh, more, uh, more, more accessible for uh, women and family person uh, about the hour that we working. Uh, we are the women in the parliament need to be like the men if we okay. want to succeed. Yeah, sometimes, yes. Unfortunately, sometimes we have to behave like uh, physically as well. Sometimes we have to... Yeah push for being in the front yeah, uh, when it lost. comes to photo action um, to ha you have to push out the, the guys and I say when they take a picture don't stay at the side always in the middle otherwise they cut you out of the picture and that yeah, is so right about it that is and what I'm so aware of the, all the time the, the people say that the woman is so hard but they didn't understand that we have to yeah yeah We have to if you want to be there. Yeah. It was a wonderful pleasure because I see we need to come to an end, unfortunately. Uh, yeah. I hope we will find many opportunities uh, in Israel or in, in Brussels. It would be cool. We have the same challenges, the same visions. Um, uh, we are this almost the same generation, <laughs> I would say. <laughs> And it was a pleasure to talk to you. Thank you. Thank you, Katrin. It was an honor for me. Very, thank you very much. Yay. It's amazing. Wow. Okay. So um, we'll try to do sign language interpretation and a summary with pictures, making sure that everybody can see. We heard two stories of two great women who made their way into Parliament, uh, in the European Parliament and in the Knesset. And I think we can summarize from the stories you were telling us that the parliaments had a lot of learning to do when you came there. Um, there was like, okay, we know about the wheelchairs and the accessibility, but sign language, need, I need a, a light that must go on when my door is opening. And then, uh, Katrin, you shared with us that they had to change the polling system uh, so that you can use it properly and self-dependent. So the parliaments did a lot of learning. So I would summarize that you were teaching the parliaments. So you have two things, two challenges. Um, first of all, uh, showing that what is the, the proper support for a person with disability. And the second challenge being a woman and learning to be loud and being heard and stepping in front. Um, and also saying stop, stop, and stop being nice. Um, so that change can happen and parliaments get more accessible for everyone. Thank you for your work. Thank you, Thank you very much, it's amazing.